This is the remote control system that I use to turn my dust collector on and off. I've owned it for about 15 years, so I think I'm finally ready to give a review of it. This is the Long Ranger multi-gate switch system for dust collectors, no. which is a fancy way of saying it's a kind of a low voltage relay. This is from PSI Woodworks out of, uh, where is it out of, Pennsylvania? Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Like I said, I've owned this for about 15 years. I picked it up when I was in Michigan once. I've never seen it in Canada. Sorry, all my Canadian friends. Uh, it's available on Amazon.com. I'll put links to all of this stuff down below. Um, it may be available elsewhere. I, I think I bought mine at a Woodcraft all those years ago. Quick interruption from the future. I did look the company up online. Turns out they have a retail website. And again, all these links will be down in the video description. And on the website, they've got a note at the top that, hey, we do ship to Canada. But then I looked at this actual product page and that one has a link, a note at the bottom that says, no, they only ship this product to the continental US. So I don't know if it's a shipping issue or if it's a regulatory thing because it's an electronic device. I don't know. Sorry, fellow Canadians, if you want one of these, you're gonna have to hop the border into the US. So there's all kinds of remote control systems for dust collectors. The main difference with this one is that it's not wireless. It's got these little terminals here. You run wires along and when, the, when, the white, when, when these wires make a connection, then the relay trips over and the dust collector kicks in. So the idea is that you're supposed to have these little micro switches on your blast gates. The kit, the kit comes with one and you can buy more. And when you open your blast gate, the switch triggers and this wire is supposed to be connected to the remote system here and that will turn the dust collector on. So you open a blast gate, the dust collector turns on, you close the blast gate, the dust collector turns off. I've never run the system like that. See, my shop's not that big. It's about 13 by 24, give or take a bit. And when I picked this thing up all those years ago, rather than set it up with all the blast gates, I just wired it. I just wired it to a light switch here on the ceiling, basically in the middle of my shop, and I figured that, you know, if with two steps, I can hit this switch anywhere. And that's the way I've run it for all the last 15 years and it works great. So this is a 220 system because I have a 220 dust collector. It also is available in a 110 system and they also sell a wireless version. I mean, the simple way is you plug this into the wall, you plug your dust collector into this, turn the dust collector on and it won't turn on until it gets a signal from here. So just a close up is the 220 outlet that it comes with. Main power plugs in there. There's a reset button. There's the receptacle on the front. Labels, labels, the two low voltage contacts up here. You know, it tells you right there, continuity between posts above will activate power to receptacle. Product code number, you know, the model number. Not to exceed three horsepower and the address of the company. The back again repeats some of the same warning and advice and gives again the address of the company. No serviceable parts inside. So this is how I normally have it hooked up. I have the unit tucked way into the corner. My dust collector's plugged into it. And then the wire runs off up the pipe to the ceiling. So I've pulled the camera back and as you can see, it's basically invisible because it's hidden in the corner behind the dust collector. So you almost never will see it if you happen to walk into my shop. The instructions have this simple diagram. They show how the unit's plugged into the wall, the dust collector's plugged into that, and their idea is that you run this low voltage wire and then all these switches from your dust collector blast gates are wired up in parallel. So as I've mentioned a few times by now, I've had this for about 15 years, and for those 15 years, I've had this one switch that is basically centrally mounted in my shop. You know, I'm two steps to the bandsaw, I'm one step to the joiner, my mobile work table is here, my table saw is right here, and that has served me well for those 15 years. However, there's always room for improvement, and I was improving my shop recently. I was redoing all the lighting, so I was doing a lot of work on the ceiling, and for part of that, I had to move this, plug, this switch. And as I was doing so, I'm like, you know, I'm behind the table saw a lot, 
and this thing is built to have more than one switch. Why don't I just add another switch? So I did. I now have added a switch down here so I can control the, table, the, the dust collector there or from the central switch. And again, because of the design, it was a very simple matter. I, I put a simple light switch here. I've got the low voltage wiring from this switch, runs along the joist there, along the side of the room, and then it comes up to this switch where it just bridges the terminal so the two switches are running in parallel. So I can turn it off and on here or turn it off and on there. Great design. I'm really looking forward to this, just making my time in the shop that much more enjoyable. So that's about all I had to say. It's a wired, not wireless, it's a wired remote control for your dust collector or any other 220 item that it would start up. Um, it's worked great for 15 years, totally happy with it. I have no plans to get rid of it and that's about it. We'll see you on the next one.